There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Cotton candy here. Get your cotton candy. Look, Mom, can I have one? It's nothing but sugar. Oh, please. Only 25 cents. Get your cotton candy. Well, just this once. But that's all you're getting, young man. One, please. Excuse me. Can I ask you? Mom, that man got in front of me. I, I just want to ask. Well, uh, one cotton candy coming up. Please, I have to know. My son was first. Where's the exit? Do you mind? I'm trying to get out of here. One at a time. Which way? Hey, pal, you don't look so good. Why don't you take it easy? I can't take it easy. Somebody's after me. Move right in, folks. See the dancing girls, blondes, brunettes, any kind you want. Starring the beautiful Maya, Princess of Darkness. Quickly, where can I hide? Hey, easy, pal. You don't understand. She's been following me all night. Everywhere I go. Can I have my cotton candy, please? Come along, Christopher. It's late. But, Mom... You've had enough sweets. You, over there. Come on over, mister. Show's about to start. Leave me alone! Come inside the tent. Always room for one more. <laughs> How do I get out of here? Well, right over there, pal. See? Through the turnstile. Follow the crowd. Hey, watch where you're going. Let me through, please. Uh, that man just shoved me. Sorry, you've got to let me out. Hey, slow down there. One person at a time. Please, someone's after me. Get in line, like everybody else. All right. All right. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? Officer? Where's the uptown train? Well, that's the next platform. Keep it moving, folks. Where am I? What's that? I, I don't know where I... Where are you going? What? Oh, I... I have to see Dr. Jackson. Who? I have an appointment on, on the Upper East Side. You don't need the subway. You're there. But how... It's the other end of that platform, right up those stairs. Say, are you all right? I... I really don't know. What time is it? Uh, quarter to twelve. Midnight? That's a good one. In the a.m., pal. Where have you been all night? Why don't you go home and sleep it off? I can't. That's the one thing I can't do. Noon in the city. Lunchtime for thousands of people. To most of them, the next hour will be a rest. A pleasant break in the day's routine. To most, but not all. The gentleman on the run is Mr. Edward Hall, an ordinary man who lives an ordinary life. The only problem is, his life has been turned upside down. He knows his way around the city, but he's had a bad night. Several, in fact. Nights without sleep as he flees a place that may or may not exist. It's all real for Mr. Hall, however, and it holds a secret he does not want to face. So get ready to run with the hunted, because time is the enemy, and the hour ahead is a matter of life and death when you're trapped in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Perchance to Dream, starring Fred Willard with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right floor. The Goodman building, right? Mm-hmm. What are you looking for? Doctor, uh, I can't remember his name. It's it's on this piece of paper. Let me see. Elliot Rathman? Oh, yes. Dr. Rathman, the psychiatrist. He's in 1410. That way, at the end of the hall. Thank you. Are you all right? I... I don't know anymore. I guess that's why I'm going to the doctor. Would you like me to walk with you? No, no. I can make it. Are you sure? What? You don't look so good, honey. 
Why don't you come with me? You? It isn't far. I can show you the way. Don't touch me. What's the matter? I'm free for the rest of the day. Get away. Relax, honey. It won't be long now. May I help you? Tell her to keep away from me. Pardon? That woman. Who? In the hall. She's been following me. I don't see anyone. She was there as soon as I got off the elevator. I didn't recognize her at first, but when, when she began to speak... Well, there's no one there now. See for yourself. She was. I tell you. Why don't you take a seat? Do you have an appointment? Uh, I, I think so. Dr. Jackson said he would call. Oh, yes. Mr. Hall. That's right. We've been expecting you. I'll tell Dr. Rathman you're here. Doctor, your 12 o'clock is here. That's fine, Charlotte. Mr. Hall? Yes. Come in. Please. Chair, the couch, whichever you prefer. Not the couch. No? You look tired. I am, but I can't. Why not? If you're tired... I might fall asleep. And what would be wrong with that? It's a long story. Are you feeling sick? No, no, just tired. And try the chair. It's pretty comfortable. <sighs> Maybe just for a minute. I have to be careful not to close my eyes. No. I thought you said you were tired. I am. I am the tiredest man in the world. You know how long I've been awake? Eighty-seven hours. Almost four days and nights. And you can't sleep? Can't. No, doctor, that isn't it. Mustn't. I mustn't go to sleep, because if I do, I'll never wake up. Really? Mind if I... Walk around. Keep the circulation going. Stand on your head if you think it'll help. I don't have that much energy. <laughs> well, what's funny now? You are. You're sure you're a shrink? That's what the diploma on the wall says. Why do you ask? You're not what I expected. Oh? What did you expect? Oh, I don't know. Something more like... An old man with the white goatee and a German accent? I've heard that before. It's what everybody expects. And they're always disappointed. I've often thought of wearing a disguise. Wait, wait a minute. I have a pair of horn-rimmed glasses in my pocket there. How's that? Perfect. I hope it makes you feel more comfortable. Oh, you looked okay before. But I'm afraid I'm wasting your time. Why do you say that? You can't help me. Nobody can. You're sure? Yes. Then why did you come to see me at all? It was... Fred Jackson's idea. He's my regular doctor. I know. What did he tell you? Not much. Your name, Edward Hall. Your age, 35. Your occupation, draftsman, unmarried. That's right. Long-standing heart condition? Since I was a child. Dr. Jackson's treating you for that? Yes, with pills. And did you remember to take them? When? This morning. What day is this? Good thing you reminded me. You uh, have a glass of water? Surely. Thanks. No history of mental illness? Definitely not. That's all I have. You want to tell me the rest? No, forget it. I'm sorry to take up your time. Mr. Hall. Yes? You really think running away will do you any good? I wish I knew. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes running away is the best answer. Depends on the problem and whether it's something that can be overcome. The fight or flight response. Precisely. But I don't know if yours is that sort of problem. Listen, you can do what you like. But I'm going to charge you for the appointment no matter what. So why not get your money's worth? Promise you won't put me in a straitjacket. I can't promise anything. It wouldn't make any difference anyway. Uh, mind if I open the window? What for, if I may ask? To see the view. Huh. Cars look like ladybugs from here. People like insects. Ah, uh, quite a drop. Straight down. Fourteen stories, uh, thirteen technically. There's no thirteenth floor. Architects are superstitious. And are you? Not that I know of. I'll have to ask you to close it. I only wanted some air. I'll turn up the air conditioner. It works best with the windows closed. Did you think I'd jump? You might have. Not a chance. I want to live. That's my problem. Why is that a problem? 
There are people who don't want me to. Then get on with it. With your story, I mean. I, I don't know where to start. Start anywhere. Okay, but I'm warning you, you'll think I've lost my marbles. Marbles can be found, Mr. Hall. Please, go on. Nice office you've got here. Nice furniture. Glad you like it. The pictures on the wall, th this one in particular, the seascape. You ever look at it? Really look at it? Why? Does it remind you of anything? Has it ever moved? Quite a few times. It used to be over the desk. My wife likes to redecorate the office. No, what's in the picture? How do you mean? The boat on the waves. You're serious? No, it hasn't. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Sorry to disappoint you. I can make it move. Can you? Yes. That would be quite an accomplishment. Not really. When I was a kid, we had a picture like that. Not the same, exactly, but close. A boat, a, a sailing ship. One of those paint-by-numbers things. I remember those. I think my mother painted it when I was a baby. <laughs> She used to tell me to look at it. If I looked at it long enough, she said, it would move. I didn't believe her. But the idea fascinated me. One night I spent a whole hour just staring at that silly boat. And did it move? Yes. You were lying in bed waiting to fall asleep, but you couldn't. That's right. You understand there's nothing strange about that. A fixed image on your retinas. Eventually your nervous system shifts the position slightly to remain alert. Or seems to. In Gestalt psychology, we call it the figure ground effect. In plain words, it was an optical illusion. I know, except that after a while, I couldn't control it. Every time I looked at the boat, the sails filled and began to dip, moving over the bounding waves. I couldn't stop it. Imagination is strong in a growing boy. I realized that. I realized it even then. But the point is, I got just as scared as if it were really happening. Why would it scare you? Oh, I, I don't know. The movement, the, the change of scene, of being someplace else. Of being out of control? Could be. Even if you know it's not real? But that's just it. The mind is everything. If you think you have a headache, and, and there's no physical reason for it, you're hurt just the same, don't you? Granted. Excuse me. I need some more of that water. Be my guest. <sighs> Thank you. Dextroamphetamine? How did you know? I recognized the pill. Not one of Dr. Jackson's prescriptions. It's the only way I've been able to stay awake. How many grains a day? I don't know, 30, 35. I'll have to tell Dr. Jackson. Tell him! I don't have much longer anyway. Not if you keep taking those. You want to hear the rest or not? Yes, I do. All right, here goes. When I was 15, I developed a rheumatic heart. They said I'd never really get well, that I'd have to take it easy, no strenuous exercise. No long walks, no stairs, no shocks to the system. Shock produces excess adrenaline, they said, and that was bad. Avoid any kind of shock. But they forgot about my imagination. Then three years ago, a woman was killed by a man who'd hidden in the back seat of her car. Maybe you read about it? I believe I did. Well, I started thinking about it. Maybe. Someone was hiding in the back seat of my car. Maybe I'd be driving over Laurel Canyon some night. I'd, I'd look in the rearview mirror and I'd see somebody or, or something rising up out of the darkness behind me. I had to drive the canyon twice a day. The second time was always late at night. It's a tricky road. One slip and you're over the edge. One night, like every other night, I was headed for home. It was a dark stretch, only my headlights cutting into the blackness. Suddenly, I began to feel uncomfortable, as if I weren't alone in the car. It was ridiculous, but I couldn't shake the sensation. I, I kept thinking, there's somebody back there, directly behind my seat. If I look in the rearview mirror, I'll see his face. And then I'll see his hands reaching up. Here's the important thing, Doctor. I knew, intellectually, that I was alone. But I also knew that my imagination could make me see something if I thought about it long enough. And so, don't ask me why, but I looked in the mirror. And there he was. I hit the brakes, lost control, and that was when I went off the road into the ravine and crashed.
No! And that was it. The car was totaled. And you were okay? Not a scratch. Of course, there wasn't anyone else in the car. It was all in my mind. But what difference did that make? I crashed anyway. You were lucky to walk away from it. Yeah, I was lucky. The shock could have killed me. The old heart condition. The doctor said I couldn't survive another one. And has there been another one? No, but there will be. Just as soon as I fall asleep, the girl will be in this dream, and it will be the last. The girl? I'm getting to that. Do you have dreams, doctor? Frequently. Does everyone? I'm sure they do. It's a way of processing what happens during the day. An attempt to come to terms with our experience, at least symbolically. Some people say they don't dream at all. I know, probably a defense mechanism. They do, but the content is something they're not ready to face consciously. I've always had dreams ever since I can remember. Sometimes they've been wonderful, sometimes terrible, but vivid. I'd wake up and for a few seconds I wouldn't be sure which was real, this world or the, or the dream. It's not uncommon, Mr. Hall. They say a dream takes only a few seconds, but I can't believe that. I've dreamed whole lifetimes. Generations have passed. Civilizations rose and fell. A single second, and it lasted forever. I'm sure that's the way it seemed. The experience of time can be very subjective. It expands, contracts. It's more than a feeling. Why do you say that? When I was a kid, I used to dream in sequence. I mean it. Remember the, the adventure serials they showed at movie theaters? It was like that. Every dream was the next chapter. And I'd always remember because when I woke up, I wrote down what happened. Do you think that's crazy? Not necessarily. It could simply be that the dreams conform to your notes and not the other way around. Then you don't think it's possible to dream in episodes? I don't say it's impossible. I, I just haven't seen it in the literature. It's possible. Believe me. For a while, the dream stopped. Then something happened. About a week ago, that was when it started again. What was it that happened? Nothing. That's just it. Why don't you tell me what you remember? Well, I went to bed around 11.30. I wasn't tired, but I needed to rest because of my heart. I don't even know when I fell asleep, but all of a sudden I wasn't home in my bed anymore. I was at an amusement park in, in the middle of the night. Can you describe it? Oh, the usual. Uh, a merry-go-round, a roller coaster, a funhouse, a shooting gallery. We could win a prize, that sort of thing. Colored lights. And it was crowded. People all around, pushing, yelling. I couldn't get my breath. There you go, bullseye. Some shooting. You must have been in the service. Yeah, Marines. Shop shooting. Well, take your pick. Stuffed animal, cupid doll. I'll take the teddy bear for my girl. One teddy bear coming up. Ooh, Artie, thanks. It's so cute. Keep it by your bed. Just remember me by. Oh, I will. Hey, how about you, buddy? What? Over here, Mark. Step right up. My name's not Mark. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Take a chance. Six shots for a quarter. Hit the bullseye and you get a genuine imported Cupid doll. How about it? Twenty-five cents. One quarter of a dollar. How much? Twenty-five little pennies. Go on. You look like a good shot. That was when I got it. The prices. I looked around, and it was the same amusement park I went to as a kid. In 26 years, nothing had changed. It was exactly as I remembered it. Ah, you missed it. Here, let me give you another rifle. This one shoots straight. <laughs> no, thank you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. See the dancing girl. See Maya, the cat girl. Move it close. One more time, and you've got it. Uh, excuse me. That'll be 25 cents. I... I don't have any change. Hey, you owe me a quarter. Girls, girls, girls! The most exotic, the most exciting, the most sensational examples of feminine pulp to this side of heaven. Move right up, folks. Last show of the night. See this roll of tickets? Well, the regular price is one dollar, but I'm going to put these away. If you're within the sound of my voice, the price is only... Fifty cents! That's right! Half price for this show only! The pitchman was in shirt sleeves and a straw hat. A crowd had gathered at the platform. All men looking at five dancing girls in skimpy costumes. 
But the one they looked at the most was in the middle, wrapped in a black silk cape, the color of her hair. He was right about one thing, she was beautiful. Full red lips, pale, delicate skin, and huge cat-like eyes. You like him full-figured? We got him. You like him slim? We got him. Blondes, brunettes, redheads, if they ain't here, believe me, they ain't worth looking at. Now, here's a little preview of what's inside. Music maestro, Maya. Give the folks a peek under the cape. Come on, baby, I know you're modest, but we can't expect him to take my word for it. Hey, honey, show us what you got. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Slowly, she opened her arms, the black cape parted, and I saw her magnificent body gleaming the sequins. I give you Maya, the cat girl. What a figure. Ooh, man, I like it. Hey, can I have the next dance? She started moving, whirling to the beat, her hair like a, a black flame, faster and faster. Was she smiling? I couldn't be sure, but the whole time, she was looking at me. I felt the crowd, the music closing in like a net. I couldn't breathe. Excuse me, pardon me. I have to go. If you let me through, please. I didn't know who the girl was. I'd, I'd never seen her before, but as much as I was drawn to her, I knew I had to get away. Something about her eyes, something deep inside those dark cat's eyes. May I have a light? What? A light. For my cigarette. Ah, uh, oh. Oh, of course. Thank you. But you're Maya. I, I just saw you on the stage. Why did you do that? Why, why did I do what? Walk away. I felt like it. You didn't find me nice to look at? Maybe too nice. Aren't you supposed to be back there entertaining the customers? I'm free now, for the night. Are you alone? Yes. Then come with me. Where? Does it matter? You want to, don't you, Edward? How do you know my name? <laughs> oh, I know a lot of things. I'm Maya. Don't be afraid. I'm not. Then come. Come. Look, I don't know if I... You are afraid. Only because this isn't happening. It's a dream. I'm, I'm not here. I'm at home, asleep, and you're part of the dream, aren't you, Maya? I know that, too. You do? Naturally. We passed a funhouse with a huge mechanical woman out front. The laughter was grotesque. Take me in there, Edward. Screw Louis' room? It, it's for kids. But it's dark. Soft and cool and dark. Please. How can I argue with a dream? Tickets here. Wait, uh, I don't seem to have any money. That's all right. We've been expecting you. What? Evening, Maya. Mr. Hall. Let's go. It's just inside this door, behind the glass. You can kiss me now. What if I don't want to? You want to. Look, whose dream is this, anyway? Edward. <gasps> what in the... It's only a prop. A mechanical dragon. I can't take this. But my heart. But it isn't real, Edward. <laughs> it isn't real. And that's when I knew, beyond any doubt, what she really wanted. She wanted to kill me! <laughs> you woke up then? Yes, I'm glad to say. My heart was beating a mile a minute. I had to lie still for an hour, waiting for it to settle down. I went to my doctor in the morning. He said I'd almost had it. Do you know who the girl was? No idea. She looked familiar, but I know I'd never seen her before. You're sure she wanted to kill you? Yes. Why did you think so? Why? If you'd seen her eyes, heard her laugh. You said she was beautiful that you desired her. Yes, but the way she followed me made me go with her. The funhouse frightened you? 
I'm not sure. I remember it from when I was a child, but it seemed different somehow. Larger and darker on the inside with more glass. There were long passages with mirrors at the end. and You were never sure which way to turn. Wherever I looked, I saw her reflection. A beautiful, seductive reflection. Someone you wanted. No one forced you to talk to her, light her cigarette, follow her inside. You went along with her willingly, didn't you? I, I couldn't think clearly. It was as if I had no will of my own. Something was happening and I was swept up in it. I don't suppose she reminds you of anyone now. Like who? Someone you've seen since in your waking life. There was a woman in the hall when I got off the elevator. She spoke to me and her voice began to change. For just a second, I thought she sounded like... Like Maya? Yes. That probably comes from sleep deprivation. Your mind is so tired it has to rest, but you fight it. So you slip in and out a few seconds at a time. It's called micro-sleep. It happens when we drive long distances, when we're pushed beyond the limits. A definite warning sign. Otherwise we lose control and, well, the consequences can be dangerous, as you must know. But what if the real danger is in closing your eyes? What if that's when the accident happens? What if... Easy. We're only having a conversation in my office. No harm can come to you here, I assure you. Sorry, I know you're right. Of course you are. We were talking about the first dream you had. What happened after that? Well, the next night, I put off going to sleep until 1 o'clock. That would make it hard to get up in the morning. But I didn't care. Turned out it didn't matter anyway. The dream came back, and this time it was more intense. I was back at the amusement park, outside the fun house, and I was running. I couldn't catch my breath. When I thought I was far enough away, I stopped. Well, the next night I put off going to sleep until one o'clock. That would make it hard to get up in the morning, but I didn't care. Turned out it didn't matter anyway. The dream came back, and this time it was more intense. I was back at the amusement park, outside the fun house, and I was running. I couldn't catch my breath. When I thought I was far enough away, I stopped. I was in front of a tent with a picture of tarot cards and a crystal ball painted on it. It was dark and no one was around, so I went inside looking for a place to rest. You are looking for me? Oh, sorry, I didn't know anyone was here. I am Madame Olga. No more fortunes, it's late. Come back tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes, I'll do that. Wait. Something is wrong? No! I mean... I don't know. Come closer to the candle. Oh, so pale. And your eyes. You are running away. Well, actually... Sit. Give me your hand. If I could just stay here for a minute. Loosen your tie. There. Thank you, that's better. And the button at your throat. Open it. Now. Someone is after you. It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't even know her. Ah. But she knows you. I'm not sure. She seems to. You desire her? She's beautiful. What man wouldn't? She is the flame and you the moth. I'd better go. Wait. I must consult the cards. I, I don't need my fortune told. No? I don't believe in that sort of thing. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not. What is cannot be changed. You mean fate? Call it what you like. The past and the future come together in this moment. What about free will? An illusion for children. All is written. Well, I hope you can tell me the way out of the park. I seem to be turned around and I have to be at work in the morning and... Silence. Well, what's my fortune? I am afraid uh, you don't have a fortune, Mr. Hall. Thanks. That makes me feel better. Why do you hurry? I have more important things to do, like getting home. You rush for no reason. You have always been here. You always will be here. Thanks for the advice. Bye. Edward. Where? 
behind you. But how? I've been waiting. Get away from me. What's there to be afraid of, Edward? It's only a dream. I have a heart condition. I can't stand all this excitement. That's silly. There isn't any excitement, not really. You said so yourself. You're home in bed, asleep. Now you can do all the things you can't do when you're awake. Anything, Edward. Anything. No, that isn't true. The doctor... Oh, look! I don't like those things. But Edward, it's the Cyclone Racer. Please look. No. Come on, Edward. Just one ride. It's fun. Please, look, I... It's the last run of the night. You must come with me. I didn't want to go anywhere near that roller coaster, but I couldn't help myself. I had no choice. Even though I knew what it would mean, I had to follow her. Oh, that was so scary. Yeah, especially in the dark. Can we go again? Nah, let's do something else. Oh, they're closing up anyway. Last ride of the night. Get your tickets. Two, please. I can't. Why not? I, I don't have any money. My wallet. That's all right, Mr. Hall. We've been expecting you. How does he know my... Come, Edward. We'll ride in the front car. Lowering the safety bar. Watch your hands. Really, I can't do this. Hold tight, Edward. It's starting. Tell them to stop. They can't. It's too late. But I can't stand heights. My heart. I mustn't look. We're going straight up. You must look, Edward. The first drop is the most exciting. It's 90 feet. A sheer drop straight down. No! Yes. Isn't it wonderful? It makes you feel alive. I have to get out. Kiss me now, Edward. The wind in our hair. I can't. It won't be long now. We're almost there. I told you I can't. I have to get out. How do I lift the safety bar? Don't climb down, Edward. It takes too long. Jump. That's it. Stand up and jump. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't push me. Don't. Ah! No! Is that it? That's it. If I go to sleep, I'll be back on the roller coaster for the next episode. It'll pick up where it left off. I'll force the safety bar, stand, Maya will reach out, push, and that'll be the end of me. On the other hand, if I stay awake much longer, the strain will be too much for my heart. And that'll be the end of me. Heads you win, tails I lose. Quite a choice, isn't it? Where are you going? Outside. Maybe if I get some air. I wouldn't advise it. What would you advise? A straitjacket? So long, Doc. You can't help me. I've wasted enough of your time. Leaving so soon, Edward? Maya. What's the matter, Mr. Hall? It's her! My receptionist? Sorry, her name doesn't happen to be Maya. Doesn't it? I can't take this anymore. I've had enough. Enough, do you hear me? What are you doing? Stand aside! No, don't. Don't! Yes! What happened? He fell, or, or jumped, from that window up there. Oh, no. The blood. The blood. Dr. Rathman, I heard a scream. Is he all right? I'm afraid he's dead. You're right. There's no pulse. But he came in just a minute ago asking to see you. He walked into your office, closed the door. I know. That's funny. When he came in, I told him to sit down. He did. In less than two seconds, he was asleep. Then he gave out that scream you heard. By the time I could stand up and get to him, he had stopped breathing. A heart attack? It must have been. Well, I guess there are worse ways to go. At least he died peacefully. Open the window, would you please? We need some fresh air. Yes, doctor.
They say a dream takes no more than a second or so, and yet in that second a man can live a lifetime, suffer and die. And who is to say which is the greater reality, the one we know or the one in dreams, somewhere between heaven and earth in the twilight zone? More from the twilight zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action. Plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at TwilightZoneRadio.com. Perchance to Dream, starring Fred Willard with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, Frenette Lebo, Doug James, Derek Purcell, Alex Sopener, Amber Lake, Rick Arthur, Elizabeth Lido, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, and Vince Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.